Have you ever thought to yourself, Minecraft should be scarier? <laughs> I found myself in the middle of a total global assimilation. Luckily, I was permitted to bring my best friend Neil with me. And for the next 100 days, we have to try and survive in this ever-changing and ever-assimilating horror island. We both spawned onto the island and had some trouble finding each other. I am behind a tree. Oh, hi buddy. Look at you, so cute. We immediately got to work gathering materials, but if there was one thing we didn't want, it was to be out in the open by nightfall. Luckily, we were able to find a good amount of material on top of this hill. Guess who just made it to the Stone Age? I did. So we decided to call this hill our permanent base for these 100 days. Neil found a tower off in the distance, which had this weird skeleton spawner looking thing in it, which was a huge head start. Cause we could take this, harness it, and get infinite arrows, bows, XP, bone meal. Ah! Uh, we could have maybe used that. Well, we got this safe and sorry, right? Um, and we watched the sunset on our very first day here at Horror Island when we realized that there should actually be some walls between us and that sunset. So uh, yeah, we scrambled to get some built and just in the nick of time too, because an outrageous amount of zombies filed out of the woods. Apparently here on Horror Island, zombies are attracted to light and sounds. Two things we were making a lot of, but no worries. We had our wall and they couldn't get in. Whoa, whoa. Let me come up, let me come up. We officially survived the first night. And honestly, at this point, I, I was questioning if we could even make an interesting video out of this because of how easy it was. The next morning, Neil was taking care of a few zombies when a couple of small parasites fell out of one and latched onto oh, Neil's face. I don't know how to say- Oh! Oh! Whoa. Oh no! I got parasites! Parasites! Oh, back up, back up! It's on me! What we didn't know was that day one was actually day zero, and the assimilation hadn't actually even started yet. So... Now day one. We still had no idea what we had gotten ourselves into. We started a mine downstairs and things started to get dark. Wait, it's pitch black. You're likely to be eaten by a Gru? What's a Gru? Day one, we had been introduced to a new monster, the Gru, a creature that can kill you as soon as you find yourself in the pitch black. Lighting apparently was going to be very crucial here on Horror Island. We did find some iron down there, uh, but we also found something very scary. Wait, there's stuff over there. What is that? What? That green stuff? What's what that green, green stuff? stuff? What green? Oh, oh they're, oh, they're flowers. <laughs> what are flowers doing down here? Hey, torch is on the right, buddy. Oh, I, okay. I was, <laughs> that, I was torches, that sorry. Really, that really does make it, that saves you sometimes. <laughs> I can't remember where I learned this, but I've always tried placing torches on the walls to the right while caving, uh, because if done correctly, you could always backtrack and this would this would help you from getting lost. We quickly discovered a new monster or something down in the cave. Yeah, no, oh, I know. There's some eyes over here. I don't I don't want to go over there. Good eyes or bad <laughs> eyes? Floating eyes. Oh. Yeah, I don't want to go over there either. These eyes, they they seemed harmless right now, but we didn't want to stick around to find out if that was true or not. When Neil and I returned to the surface, well, we had the same exact thought at the same exact time. Oh, do you want to sleep? Yeah, you, I guess we can. Good night. Hey. Okay, we can sleep. Dude, we're gonna kill this thing. This is, this is so easy. What was that? While building our roof, Neil spotted another building off in the distance. It's got a little spiky spiral. The next step was for us to gather enough iron to make full iron armor for both of us. We didn't get too far though, before we got a chilling and cryptic message. One. What is, what, why does it say one? <laughs> what? Now I wanted to know who was communicating with us. Was there some mastermind behind all this? They go look up! Oh, 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 zombie! <laughs> Dude, well, they what crawl on the wall! wall. Ah! God, stop it! Stop it! Neil saw those eyes again and said they screamed at him or something, but I think he's overreacting. What was that? He did also say he found some flying creature in a ravine. Uh, Dayton? What? What is that? What? Dude, she's... It's right there. 
Uh. <laughs> it's probably fine. Oh! What'd you do? The started attacking it. Oh shoot! What the heck is that? Neil! I don't know! <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> we carefully then I fell down there. made our way to the bottom of the ravine and were stopped by a horde of zombies. Luckily, Neil was making enough noise that they all ran over to him while I made a proper way down. Whoa, no. The skiver things are back. What do we call them? Gosh dang it. Keep distracting. You're probably wondering right now if we're playing this on hardcore. And, uh, no is the answer. Because, to be completely honest, we didn't think we'd get very far. Uh, that being said, it is kind of a cool surprise to see ourselves uh, beating up these these bigger and scarier baddies and, you know, to think that things like skeletons were ever even a threat. Probably. Oh! Yes, yeah, something. Something more. More more skeletons. Where's the skeleton coming from? Dig it! Dig it! Oh, Neil! <laughs> okay, okay. That was the last time just a normal skeleton was going to scare me. What are all these sounds? Bill <laughs> Gemstone is a moderator. Kevin is a moderator. The cave had a couple more surprises for us as we were ganged up on by a spider and a zombie villager. I got the spider. I got the villager. Oh no, I'm about to die. Get it, 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 get it. Yeah. And we decided that now would be a good time to head back to the surface. So I'm this torch thing doesn't help me at all. We had gathered plenty of iron and we're all set to make full iron armor and iron tools. But from here, I don't know where to go. Oh, Neil, let me hold your hand. Must this is the way back? No, this is darkness. Why are there torches on this side? I know that I was putting torches on the right, and I thought Neil was, so I don't know why we can't find our way out. Did you know that our torches run out? No, they don't. Are you serious? Yeah, hold on. In case you were wondering why it's called Horror Island, it's because Terror Island was already taken. And we were terrified. So this was the out exit. It was just wasn't lit up because really? torches ran, ran out. Oh, shoot. Yep, here's our... This is ridiculous. No way. <laughs> In a world where light is so important, this was a terrible discovery. As soon as we reached the surface, Neil spotted something off in the distance. There's a chest on a tree over there. What? We decided to go check it out with me on the ground and Neil on top of the trees. I'm not going the right way. But it got dark fast, very dark, very fast. I decided to turn around and run back, assuming nothing too crazy happened. I should be able to fend off the few mobs that spawned between me and the house. Where are you? You passed the tree, dude. A blood moon. Before we were able to process what a blood moon even was, Neil opened the chest. Yeah, that chest was a monster, a crab-like creature disguised as loot in order to lure greedy explorers like Neil to their deaths. Oh no! But I couldn't worry about that. I had my own problems. The blood moon had caused hundreds of spiders to spawn all around me. Luckily, Neil respawned and ran to my aid. Okay, okay I'm about on. to die. Can you come save me? <laughs> I need to get my stuff back. My hero. <laughs> No! Neil actually did manage to get his stuff back, but quickly found himself in the same boat as me. So he towered up the tower and boxed himself in. I'm being by the crew! <laughs> what is going on? We both respawned back inside our base and realized just how bad the situation was. We did. Did you put stuff in the chest that, like, like any iron or anything? <laughs> A little bit. And just to make matters worse. Okay, let's sleep. <laughs> let's sleep. I'm gonna. That's an idea. Can I don't we sleep feel in a tired moon? enough to sleep. We can't sleep during a blood moon. What? <laughs> <laughs> With no other options, we went back into the mines to try and recover some of our lost iron. But after another ominous message in our chat, to what, what does it mean? Our worst fears were confirmed. The torches were indeed falling off the walls, or rather, something or someone was removing them. Everywhere. If they're falling, does that mean that, like, there could be things down here? Okay, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, we I'm out. I think we just stayed where we were. I think <laughs> sitting there was just fine. Things were not much better up here, though, and we were even considering abandoning the place altogether. What the heck? We decided to check out the building that Neil found in the distance. Maybe it would have something helpful in it. There's a building right down there. 
Where? You gotta trust me. Okay. I I mean, what else do we got to lose? Let's make this our first run. <laughs> nope! Oh gosh. Oh gosh, what is that? Looks like this infection is spreading though, as we came across this strange sludge in the forest. But where was it coming from? Where did this all start? I may have found my answer when we came across this strange hole in the ground. What? Yes. Maybe this housed the mysteries to everything going on here at Horror Island. Let's ignore that. We continued on and found a small island off the shore. Ah, hi, spider. We found plenty of trees and even some cows off in the distance. It was clear that this was meant to be our permanent base for the rest of these 100 days. I ventured back to the original house to retrieve all our stuff. Door? Yeah, I'll take you. While Neil stuck around to build the new base up in the trees where baddies couldn't reach us. Things were going very well. <laughs> On my way back, the sun set very quickly again. Oh, it's man. dark, it's dark, it's in the shadows, <laughs> it's so dark. I'm literally jumping from tree to tree, not knowing exactly where I'm going to land when I jump. And it wasn't until I reached water and saw Neil off in the distance that I felt some semblance of safety. That's you, I see you. Neil, you're a shining yep. beacon. The same couldn't be said for Neil, unfortunately. What is that? <laughs> ah, ah, ah! As his unreachable base turned out to be quite reachable. Stairs will do that to you after all. And also apparently because I had moved the beds. Where are you? Um, I'm back by your old base. No way. I found Neil's house, but before I went over, I built a small shelter, placed a bed and a chest with all of our stuff. And you know, it's a good thing I did too. Oh, all yeah. your stuff. All your stuff and a slimy thing! <laughs> Stay and die! Having nothing to lose and honestly nothing to do, I decided to give it another try. There was only one creature there after all. What? I s what? It says it was slain by Danon? Did it copy you? The parasite things weren't the only assimilated creatures we had to worry about, as apparently the moment we die, our corpses are reanimated as these horrible monsters. That's right, we were all infected. This will prove to be our downfall later on in this challenge, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I was reminded that this is still Minecraft when an unrealistic amount of vanilla zombies crowded around my super safe pile of dirt. <laughs> By the time Neil got back to me, I was swimming away from the zombies and spotted our reanimated bodies. That is my body. <laughs> is it really? I was hoping that these guys would be some slow zombie type creatures, but you know what? These guys are agile and very strong. Take these, jeez, these guys swim fast. We were nowhere near prepared for this stage of the assimilation, but honestly, it was not waiting for us. Three. Um, what does that mean? What? Game. We needed a new game plan if we were gonna make this work. So first we decided to stay on the island. We don't have enough wool, right? To make a second bed. Uh, no. We needed to start building our shelter ASAP because we were going to be having some long nights. I started by putting a fence up around our- You have oh. a second bed in here! What oh. You... oh! Oh yeah. I do, don't I? What are you... Go to bed, go to bed! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There are monsters <laughs> I nearby. I tried looking around to see if I could find it, but while doing that, Neil must have slipped or tripped or something and he fell down a hole and- What? What's happening?! What? There's the? something down here! How'd you do that? I grabbed my face! I don't know. I think he's just being a bit dramatic. Nothing the little sleep can't solve. Go to bed, go to bed, go to bed, go to bed, go to bed. Day seven, we started clearing out the surrounding area and got the walls of our new house set up. It's a good thing none of these guys can break blocks. Otherwise, we'd be in real trouble. <sighs> we adopted this chicken and Neil started a small farm. Luckily, it looks like this fence is working and we'll keep all the baddies out. The fence is keeping it out. It looks like, no it's not, no it's not. We doubled up our fence and added slabs to the top in order to keep parasites from climbing in. We started mining and ran into this spider. Oh, 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 oh. Apparently not only is this assimilation infecting mobs, but it will even lay dormant in many until close to death, which means that we could be surrounded by assimilated creatures without even realizing it. The next day, we found some diamonds and <gasps> even did a little diamond high five. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Blood diamonds. We did it. Neil made some bread from his farm while I made a diamond pick. It was time to bring those cows over. We needed both food and leather if we were going to start making progress. Looks like all three were still there, though one was assimilated. 
Leave that other cow out of it. Jeez, this guy packs a punch. Got him. And now, looking at our island from the outside, I can see truly how surrounded we actually are. <gasps> On day 11, I decided I'd venture out and start clearing things out. I didn't make it far, though, before I heard something teleport in. Come here, Neil. Dead Neil. <laughs> what? Whoa. I was still close to the base. Okay, embarrassingly close, actually. So I went out to reclaim everything real quick, and an assimilated villager teleported in. Let's go, go, let's go. Whoa! This just got a whole lot more complicated. If creatures could just teleport in, then what was even the point of building walls at all? Here it is! Get out! Get out! Get out! Go what? inside! Go I inside! I don't see it! I don't see go it! Go inside! Just go inside! Just... Son of a gun! Oh my gosh! As more of them were teleporting in, it looked like what was actually happening was that an Enderman was grabbing other mobs and teleporting them in and then leaving. What the freak is that?! This Enderman wasn't going away anytime soon, and each time we die, that's another monster coming after us. Oh, now there's another me! Oh, shoot! This is such a bad thing. Oh my gosh! <laughs> we had to reassess the situation from a neighboring island as it was just getting too much. Dude, there's just a freaking ton of them! And it was decided that I would go back to recapture our captured base. But like, we gotta kill, that is, that is a good base though. We can't just leave it. No, we can't. Got him. It took a bit of back and forth, but I made enough progress to safely return. All the while, I'm, I'm pretty sure Neil was hanging out, chilling on the other Ooh. island, relaxing, having a good time. Oh, what? We still have corpses to clear out, and I even run into Neil's crab chest at his original platform. What? Oh. Neil rescued one of the cows and made an enclosure for it while I saved the other one so we can finally start breeding them. All right, here you go, cows, make baby. Because we'd lost all our stuff again, we decided to go mining. And as we were mining, we could hear the sounds of Endermen screaming, skeletons drawing their bows, all mixed in with a bunch of assimilated creatures. Well, we Why do good. I hear an Enderman scream? Just Keep hearing a sense. bow firing too. Are you shooting somebody? I'm not. Do skeletons fight assimilated people? <laughs> I honestly didn't know what answer I was hoping for. The next morning started out exactly how you'd like one to. Warm breeze, birds singing, Neil outside doing the morning chores. What? Oh, oh, whoa! Something's here! It was clear that Neil's little issue wasn't going to just fix itself, so I was forced to step in and help out. <laughs> Back up, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead! Hold on. No! Imagine not knowing uh, it was you. Slenderman. Uh, oh! I got the oh, I got oh, the wolf. wolf! We decide that enough is enough. We can't keep living like this. Or, uh, well, not living like this. Uh, Neil was so tired of dying, in fact, that he figured something else ought to die for a change and started murdering the cows. Oh, but the apparently, cow. those cows were All already right. dead. Yep, there it is! At this point, our biggest threat is that Enderman. So we built a second story that is only two blocks high to preventing him from teleporting in. This way, at least we'll, you know, have a safe space. We also decided that we would need potions and other things, so we made a nether portal to see how things were doing down there. Light it up. Um, and surprisingly, everything seemed pretty normal and we even spawned just outside of a fortress. Of course, things don't sound normal, but honestly, that's all par for the course at this point. Uh, I heard giggling. Oh. Ignoring all the scary and terrible things Ooh, going on around me, I started there. staring up to the fortress when... <laughs> what? What are you getting hit by? I don't know, something jump scared me. What the heck was that? Was that a ghost? Maybe that was the ghost. Maybe don't turn your back on the ghosts. Day 17, we decided to go back into the black hole thing near our island. What? It, what is that? I don't know exactly what's happening here, but I do have a sneaking suspicion that we'll get some answers down there. But did we get answers? Well, yes, actually. 
We learned that this is not a place we wanted to be. Oh, there's a ton in here. And, you know, we just blocked it off. At least that way, nothing would be able to get out. Oh, oh. So they can break through blocks. Day 18 was the day that we decided we needed diamond armor. If we were gonna stand a chance against anything, we'd need to get some heavy gear. So we stripped mine for the next couple days. Oh, oh, oh. oh we've been, we've been stripping like crazy. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm a pretty good stripper. Wow, who told you that? Pretty much everybody I strip with. <laughs> <laughs> they always go, wow, you're really good at this. Ooh, diamond. <laughs> what was the freaking sound? We then stripped into a small see. cave and found this strange spore thing. I think oh, I see it. What? Where? Oh, I heard a scream. Oh! Go, oh, go, go, go! Dang it! Ugh. We hurried back after getting killed to try and reclaim all our stuff, but it was too late. It had already despawned, and we had no one to take our frustration out on other than ourselves. Losers! Bunch of losers over here. These guys. We finally finished stripping on day 21 and found the Endermen that had been plaguing us these last 21 days. If we could just take them out, maybe we'd stand a chance. We know they still hate water, so I was gonna try and swim around and maybe get a few hits in. Yeah, if I'm in the water, yeah, what are they gonna do? Try and scare me? It'll work, but that's it. After all, we haven't seen any water creatures, so we should be perfectly fine as long as nothing unexpected happens. What? what the devil is that? What? <laughs> There's water creatures. There's water creatures. What? Neil, there's water creatures. At this point, there was only one place where we felt like we could anticipate anything. The nether. Oh, it's a oxalotl or lizard or something. Oh, Ooh. he shoots magma balls. Okay, at this point, our plan is to build a simple straight path to that first tower and stare up it. While doing that, we got a chance to chat a little bit about our mortality and things like that. I'm losing who I am. Yeah, I don't know what to live for, really. I'm just dying over and over again. So you're having a post-life crisis. <laughs> so these people up here. Oh, skeleton! Are we like really bad at this game? Like, are we, we like be. genuinely we, we, the worst? We at might this? not be the ones to play this. Hey, I made it. Hey, you did it too. Hey, look at me. Okay, I, t I take back what we said. We are good at this game. We are. We made it to the fortress, and Neil cleared out the blaze while I handled some wither skeletons. Boom. We bridged over to other parts of the fortress, hungry, low health, and out of food. But we were looking for a blaze spawner, hoping to at least find one, and then maybe we could come back after gathering some more supplies. Instead, we found a ton of skeletons. Not even wither skeletons, just regular skeletons. Got it. But they did so much damage to us and we didn't have any food that we just Jeez. ended up having to call the adventure short. <laughs> when we got back, I had this idea that I was gonna create a farm, but on the water or something, like make a bridge or something like that. I don't even know what the plan was here, but, but this is what I was doing and I needed a lot of dirt. So I was gathering dirt and that water creature popped up again. That's what killed me. Is he attacking? He's looking at me. Oh, where'd it go? It, it seems to know that we're here, but I figure as long as we stay out of the water, we'll probably be fine, right? Oh, he's right around that sand bed. Ah. He's, oh, he's coming. He shoots something. Go, 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 go. Oh, he's coming right behind you! <laughs> oh, he broke all of our blocks! He's gonna destroy this house. He's gonna destroy this house. Uh, so it, it doesn't swim, apparently. It, it just flies. No. So, that's neat. No! How do we kill something like that? A bow and arrow, maybe? We, ha we, we have We have a bow. Do we? Where is he? Ah! I got him! Okay, we now had a new strategy. It took us nearly a quarter of this challenge, but we were finally figuring it out. I'm poisoned. Are you gonna die? I don't know, hasn't decided to let me know that Hey, yet. Don't, don't touch me, just in case. 
Day 25 is a big day in any 100 day challenge. The day that you should really have your act together. And to be fair, we were getting there. That is until we're swapping beds. Don't even we worry sure, about we it. We sure sweat. That's just, what, just what four. There's more. I honestly don't really remember when three happened. I must have been distracted. Whoa, whoa, look out! Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <Venice lightning thing. laughs> but now this had to mean that the assimilation was evolving even further than we were expecting. Ow. The forest on the neighboring island seemed to be a hot spot for Enderman, and Neil suggested just burning the whole thing down. Which really wouldn't be the responsible thing to do, as we need to be conserving resources, not setting fire to things is so satisfying in Minecraft and in real life. I mean, in Minecraft. Like with the arrows the day before, this fire actually revealed a very interesting strategy that could be implemented. Oh, geez. Oh, these things are not fireproof. Really? Oh, boy. We wasted no time in surrounding the perimeter of our island in Netherrack lighting it on fire, putting out the fire when it accidentally caught our fence, moving the netherrack back a little bit, and then lighting it on fire again. A good day's work. And as if to put our new defense to the test, we got attacked, and you know what? The fire does its oh, job. Oh, he's burning. Ah, he burned. Our goal, right, yeah. is by day 100 to have this thing locked down. Day 27, I went mining for iron while Neil chopped some trees. Neil set up a much needed hub downstairs at Y11, and I run into that spore again. I'm going to I'm going to drop everything off before I <laughs> That's why you drop everything off. So apparently that spore is actually something called a beacon, a living, growing abomination spawner. We're not sure exactly how it got here, but we know that this thing is capable of spawning in these creatures, which would explain why, you know, a cow or a sheep would be all the way underground here. So now the question is, do we just leave it alone? Or do we take it on? The way I see it, these beacons will likely show up wherever we go. So if we can take one out, I would really like to know how. And something far more concerning. What is this green block? Green block? Infested stone? Infested stone? This assimilation was not slowing down anytime soon, and we could only hope that our base was still safe. The stone, it's, oh, iron. The stone itself is getting infected. Though we weren't too hopeful the further in we got, because it seemed like it was much worse than just a few patches here and there. Entire caves were becoming infested. The beacon would have to wait for a moment. We needed to check on something. Oh, it's infected up here too. Shoot, hold what? on. What's going on outside? So the infestation didn't seem to be spreading upstairs too okay. much. Oh, it's teleporting. Guy up there! But that was honestly the only positive thing we could say about upstairs. Up. Dude, there's a giant spider thing out there. When we got back to the beacon, we started digging around in different areas to try and reach the beacon without risking our lives in the open caves. We found a spot where we could enter the cave, but it is a lot larger than we expected. There it is. Yeah, man, I don't know what to do here. You know what? Let's get a bucket of lava and let's just okay. pour it on it. Okay. <laughs> let's just. Sure, Wait, like look at oh! <sighs> and so we decided we would tackle this thing together and divide the tasks between us evenly. I'd go in and, you know, kill myself while Neil uh, took all my stuff. You know, it's that kind of sacrifice you really look for in your friends, so... Thanks, Neil. You got your lava? Got my lava. Okay, I'm in water. Oh, wow. Yeah, that thing makes so much stuff. Okay, I'm about to die because there's a ton of stuff coming at me. Good. Still alive, but oh man. <gasps> ah, there I go. Okay. Yeah, this thing's making all these, so we need to take this thing out. Honestly, I, I lasted longer than I expected, but the beacon seemed to notice me and spawned in way more creatures than I could handle. Neil goes on a suicide run of his own and towers up, but the beacon cleverly just spawned in creatures that could climb. Oh! 
Uh, and while Neil was busy dying, I dug a bit further and actually managed to get within arm's length of the beacon. Now for the moment of truth. Got it. They can be killed. Yes, this is huge. This was the point where we were finally feeling like things were starting to work out. I'm behind you, so don't freak out. Ah, what? <laughs> I thought you were there. <laughs> but remember, the first lesson of Horror Island, never get comfortable. And we were very slow learners. Okay, I am going to play the next couple minutes for you in real time because I, I just honestly have a hard time watching this part. Okay, there is a... Uh. What is it? What is it? What is it? It's bouncing around. He's trying to get in up here. He's trying to get in upstairs? Yep. Oh, he's not doing it though. He's right behind us. you right now. Ah! Okay, I'm going back down. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Back up. Maggots. Get him. Get him. Get him. Dang it. Another sheep. Look out. I don't see him. Oh, there's the Enderman. Do you need a shield? Whoa. Here's a shield. <laughs> Dig it! Oh, come on! Did you die? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's some dudes up there! Nope! Nope! How do we get there's out of this? There's a freaking spider inside! How do we get out of this? It doesn't seem to see me. I'm in the nether. Okay. <laughs> I doped out of there. Oh, there's a lot more worse in here! What? <laughs> they keep going through the portals, so now there's just a ton of assimilated dudes in the nether. Okay, bail. There's, a, there's one boat out here. There's a boat! Run! The boat! Nope, keep going! Oh, come on! I was in the water! Oh, there's a lot of them in the water, too. There's so many! <laughs> Jeez! Do what do we do? Do this! Now you might have been asking yourself, if this world isn't hardcore, then how can someone lose? Easy. You get killed in your respawn area. Because the more times you die, the more monsters. The more monsters, the more times you die. And the harder it is to get away. This game isn't about survival anymore. It's about escape we're losing if we can't get out then it's game over and it took a good amount of time some creativity and a lot of luck but eventually we both managed to get out but make no mistake this was this was no victory our base was officially assimilated And to be honest, we're, we're lucky that we didn't have to end the video at day 30. We'd been pushed from our house before, but never to this extent. Day 31, we were as defeated as we had ever been. And at this point, the only thing we really needed to do was get back and, and grab our beds or at least destroy them so that we don't respawn back in that mess. With some difficulty, I managed to actually grab both beds and escape downstairs, but that was about as far as luck would take me today. Oh no. There's a there's a you in here. I forgot you died in here. It just occurred to me that now it, <gasps> No! No! Well, it was a suicide oh, mission. No. We knew it was going to happen. No, Mike. I'm I'm somewhere else. I'm back where we started. Meanwhile, Neil was out looking for a new place to settle down and spotted something in the distance. There's a brick house thing over here. But eventually headed back to our neighboring island. On day 32, Neil started exploring the small island next door, but you know, it turned out to be a pretty big, small island. I went exploring. Oh, dang it, you weren't supposed to do that. But I did. It started raining and thinking that 
now the Enderman wouldn't be able to harm us, I decided to make one last attempt to reclaim our house and I headed back. But there was no way that I was going to be dying anymore. This was absolutely ridiculous. We were going to figure out a way to survive no matter what this island throws at us. Dang it, man. The gravity of the situation didn't quite dawn on us until we respawned in the dark. Separated, lost, and scared. We tried to find each other, but it was no use. So we camped in separate areas and waited for the sun to come up. While waiting, I witnessed a battle that confirmed exactly what we had theorized. Mobs and assimilateds fighting it out. Never thought I'd find myself rooting for creepers and spiders, but here we are. Once it was bright enough to navigate again, I made a small boat and started looking for Neil. But instead, I found that brick house he had spotted. There's a house. Oh, oh I think I saw that earlier. Was there anything Hold in on. it that killed you? I, I didn't go over there because I was yeah, waiting for a, you. Yeah, it's a brick house. He remembered where it was, so we met there and decided to get comfy and make it our base. That's right. This is where we would spend the rest of our 100 days. But we became very uncomfy when we found a staircase going down. Far down. There was a massive dungeon under this house, full of iron bars and spawners in every direction. However, with massive risk comes massive rewards, as every chest we found actually had some very useful items in it, like swords with mending, or food, or books, and just a bunch of other stuff. While down there, we were attacked by a horde of armored zombies. Apparently, we weren't the first to come down here looking for refuge. After killing the zombies, we put their armor on and decided to clear this place out of danger and loot. Maybe eventually we could even retake our jungle home. After checking the place out, we found an armored skeleton spawner, similar to the one that Neil broke in the beginning of this challenge. Except this time, I was here, and I decided we would turn this into an XP farm. On my last 100 days videos, I made a skeleton farm that didn't exactly work, and you guys actually told me in the comments that it was because I had dug too far down and the spawner wasn't active. So I was sure to keep this one a bit closer. By the way, go ahead and leave a comment on this video if there's anything you want to say, or uh, if there's anything that we are doing terribly wrong, and what we could be doing better. Ah! Son of a gun. Hi. On day 35, we continued exploring this dungeon as we hadn't even scratched the surface, uh, or the underground, or surf, the underground surface. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, well, there's more stuff. When we went upstairs, the noises that had been going on this whole time seemed a lot louder and a lot closer. Gosh, it's the noises for me, man. <laughs> Back downstairs, we ran into some more armored zombies, but this time they were wearing diamond armor. So we headed back upstairs to drop off all the loot in the chest, just in case. Ah, what? At this point, Neil was ready to bail on this place, find somewhere else, and I was inclined to agree. But by then, the sun had gone down, so we decided we'd just keep gathering loot and uh, maybe head out in the morning. Yeah, we're gonna need to make a lot of trips, coming yeah. back and forth. Oh, here's the skeleton spawner. While we were there, though, I went ahead and finished the XP farm, as it'd probably be nice to have, even if we wouldn't be staying here. I test out the hopper and my ADHD, and, you know, they both work. It works. All right, all right, here we go. And would you believe me if I told you that this went off without a hitch? Oh. That's okay, I wouldn't know either. No! Dang it. I failed. And just like that, the XP farm works. It works so well, in fact, that just in this one sitting alone, Neil gets up to 19 levels. Ow. Okay. So one of us at a time. I'm happy with this. Like, I'm okay with staying in here for a while. <laughs> Dude, me too. We can use all this Ow. bone to make bone meal and make food down here. Uh, this wasn't a part of the plan, but honestly, we could set up a little base right here. I mean, we got infinite bows and arrows, armor, bone meal. In fact, on day 39, we set up a little farm down here to get unlimited food. Something we haven't had in 39 days. Yeah, we ought to build the enchanting table down here. We probably should. We got books now, too, dude. Though we will need to somehow get the diamonds from our jungle home. Um, okay. You should be good to harvest there, Neil. I will help. Whee! <laughs> got them all. That was so fun. <laughs> that, looked, that looked so fun. At this point, I reached level 30 for the first time in my life. 
which in case you didn't know, I haven't actually been playing Minecraft for that long. I only started about a year ago for our SMP series, Mining in the Attic, where everyone on the server had to get me a total noob at the time to beat the game on hardcore. But if I died, the entire server would restart and all progress would be lost and everyone had to start all over. It, it's, it, you should check it out. It's a good time. But since then, I've only been able to do one other 100 day challenge. So uh, still pretty new to this. We built a small entrance for our base and finally we're starting to feel safe. That's right, this was the base where we'd be spending the remaining 100 days. Only two blocks high so Endermen couldn't teleport in and far underground so giant spiders couldn't find us. This was going to be a great base. We even had the idea to create a separate room for our beds so that in the event of a break-in, we wouldn't be surrounded by our corpses again on respawn. We had learned from our last base. I was still one string short of a second bed, but we went ahead and turned on some relaxing music to make us feel better. But that didn't help Neil from getting ornery and he still wanted to have his own bed. So we went looking for a spider spawner for that last piece of string. We did find a spawner, but it was actually a zombie spawner. And that was not the only thing in that room. Oh, look at that thing. There it is. It's got the eye. It was that creature from the water. It was inside this room or at least what was left of the room. Whenever we'd get close enough to the spawner, it would activate and the zombies would spawn in only to be picked off by the monster which was floating above. It's right above. Oh, there it is. And it even looks like it's dug all the way to the surface. Did you? Why is it so bright? Light? Is Did this dig, dig up? Okay, that's bad. We were gonna need to kill this thing because there was nothing stopping it from just tearing through to our new base, which was only a few blocks away. There was no way we were already going to be losing this thing. So we decided on a strategy. We'd activate the spawner by digging underneath it, wait for the monster to attack the zombies, and then as they spawned in, the monster would fly down to grab the zombies, and we would shoot it. It'd take a minute, but we already knew that these things could die. Okay, here comes another one with enchanted bread? I'm panicking. Apparently when face to face with one of these terrifying creatures, this game has a panic mechanic. <laughs> That's nice. But it's not nice because it makes it hard to shoot bows and arrows, place blocks, and a bunch of other stuff. Come on. Oh, I got it! What? I got it! I got it! Did you? Oh. Now that that's taken care of, we go in to assess what's left. Oh, there it is. It appears to be extremely powerful, but it doesn't seem to be able to break ore blocks, which is very good to know. If we just made a wall out of ore. On day 43, we made a grindstone to get XP from the enchanted armor that was clogging up our chest. And though we were hoping for a couple days of rest at this point, what we saw would keep us up for nights to oh, come. Oh, it's the sludge, it's coming through. If there were infected blocks, then that must mean that there's a beacon nearby. We started digging and quickly found a cave that had a lot of crabs, a giant spider, and even a sheep, all of which we were able to take out pretty easily. Oh, sheep. Oh, oh, sheep. Got him. Unfortunately, the infection is still spreading and fast and we still haven't found the beacon causing it. On our way back, we did manage to find a spider spawner though and uh, politely asked it for some of its string. There's there a string. Okay, that mission accomplished. I can open the door for you, okay. Yep. The next day as we woke up, so did the fifth phase of this assimilation. Five. Five what? We spent the day on the urgent task of gathering iron ore for our base. We figure if we can surround the base in iron, the infection won't be able to get in. While mining, I, I noticed this strange bell sound. I couldn't help but feel like that was trying to tell us something. Are you hearing that bell? There's a bell now. Luckily, after a full day, the infection seems to have no effect on ore blocks. This idea was actually working. I'm hearing uh, explosions off to the side. Neil and I decided now would be a good time to dig to our jungle home. We're better equipped now and we do really need those diamonds. Well yeah, there has been a jump scare in a while. It's gonna it's gonna happen. <laughs> After digging over there, we quickly found a name tag in the distance. Oh, I think it's right here. You see Anna? Yeah, Dan and one. We follow it and manage to get into the staircase where Neil takes out my corpse and the crab responsible. We still weren't quite ready to retake the base, but we were able to empty everything downstairs and bring it back to our current base. You know, the you know the one that we're gonna spend the remaining 100 days in. We built a diamond pick, and Thanks. Neil gathered enough obsidian for an enchanting table and a new nether portal. He also wisely grabbed some lava for a garbage can, which we desperately needed. There, now we can throw stuff away. 
The next day, I wanted to return to the jungle home because I knew there were even more valuables in the chest upstairs. So what I did is I dug underneath the chests and managed to get everything of worth out of them without angering anyone above me. This included the rest of our diamonds and even some saplings, which meant Neil could start an underground tree farm. I built our enchantment table, and Neil built a wall of glass between our pumpkins and the cave to try and keep them safe. A little bit of a separation, though, so that's, that's nice. On day 49, Neil had actually been digging very, very far and found a brand new island that seemed largely untouched. It would look safe. So I'm not, whoa. I thought it could be cool to turn one of these jungle trees into a treehouse base or something, but before I got too far into that, it got dark and we decided to head back for the night. Ah, the halfway point. And I finally started enchanting stuff. I'd never really been able to do much with enchanting, but I was excited to learn. We decided to build a new nether portal so we could go back into the nether and get some blaze rods, maybe start making some potions. But when we got in, we made safe. a terrible decision. Okay. Good luck. Nope! Nope! Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, no. Funny enough, I found out that as long as I stayed inside the portal and didn't move, they actually couldn't hurt me. It was like some weird limbo situation. So I, uh, I sat tight while Neil came back after dying and uh, cleared them all out. How, how is everything? I didn't know I could do this. Okay, all the Enderman went to the outside. It's right here above us. Oh, we're just back. Pants. Yeah. After most of them were cleared out, I stepped out and managed to kill one of the two Endermen out there. Whoa, there's two of them. <gasps> I killed one. And the other one caught fire and died somewhere else. Die. Are we Die. Gonna, if we go back through this, though, we're going to be back at home. Oh, yeah, shoot. I didn't think of that. Okay, I'm going to do a test and go through. I'll let you know where I appear. We're at our old house. We're at our old house. Oh, there's an Enderman in here. Oh, there's more. You know, I figured that if Neil was gonna die, me dying as well wouldn't be all that helpful. So I just decided to stay back and, you know, let him handle it. I uh, actually was able to kill this Enderman though because of that. So, you know, I'm, I'm helping. Okay. <sighs> With both of us now being back here though, we can see just how bad the situation has gotten here. If we were lucky, all the Endermen were now dead, but there would still be a ton of baddies and monsters inside yeah. the house and around here. So we quickly broke the portal dug underneath the house to get back to the stairs and then back to our base. By the time we did get back, it was day 52. I can hear something and it's not going away. Neil fixed the portal on his first try. Hey! But things were only getting worse. Not only could I hear digging nearby. Wait, I can hear digging, but the infection was spreading again and we were all out of ore blocks. That's getting all the dirt, oh no. It is, whoa, yeah, that's new. Or we had seen this infest stone block and dirt block, but we hadn't seen it infest cobblestone yet. So we decided to test that out in here. Uh, let's leave this one and see what happens. Whoa, oh dang man, it's getting in here. And while on that note, it would appear that logs are definitely not safe. Our base was officially compromised again. So I dug underneath to see what the damage was and things were pretty nasty. I cleared out as much as we could so we could surround the floor with cobblestone or something, and then this happened. What? Oh, shoot. It looks like beacons actually grow out of infested blocks, so if we're able to keep the blocks covered with uninfestable blocks, we might be able to keep them from appearing. In order to do that, though, we would need to know for certain which blocks were safe and which blocks were not. But it's hitting planks before, hasn't it? Oh, I don't know about planks, actually. All right, here's some jungle wood planks. Nice. Okay, well, that's a good start. How much string do we have, or do we have any? How much what? String do we have? What? S string? S oh, S string. T-R-I-N-G, <laughs> string. Oh, to make some fishing rods? Yeah. We also have the nether that we can go to. Yeah, it's not good at fishing in the nether, though. No, no, I guess it's not. But while working on that, the infestation had spread to our nether Oh, portal. for crying out loud. So we were gonna need to find out for sure, now, once and for all, if cobblestone would work. While we were doing that, something started clipping through the wall. Uh, Nathan, I think I know what's screaming at us. 
Oh, shoot. What is that? We ran away upstairs and saw that the brick still looked fine, but the same type of creature was outside the brick house. So we started attacking it, hoping to take it out before it had a chance to get <gasps> to us. Oh, it's breaking. It's breaking the walls. It's trying to. Ow! Oh. That hurt. That hurt Ow. me. Ow! No! Dang it! Build, 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 build! Uh, it died. It died. Whatever was clipping through that wall downstairs posed a very real and urgent threat to our base. And now we knew that for certain. We started digging around the area that was making the most noise, the portal room. But it isn't long before- Ah! Ah! Dated! Oh shoot! This thing was between me and the base, so I bailed to the only exit I had. Neil respawned and came back to get his stuff, but saw something so terrible that the only thing he could do was join oh me. Oh my gosh! Oh no! Well, the nether too, forget this. Not that the nether was any less unsettling though. Are you seeing these particles or is that just me? Yeah, I'm seeing that. We came back and built a wall in front of the portal and tunneled back. And just to add icing to the cake, blood oh! moon. Oh! Shoot, where do we go? Run, just run back, run back to our base. I'm not ready. <laughs> I don't have a sword on me. Okay. Um. Okay, we might be fine down here. It didn't really seem to do anything so long as we were downstairs, though. So, um, stripping it was. Oh, there's a cave right in here. Good. The next day started with torches falling off the wall again. But honestly, I had actually forgotten about that with everything else that happens later this day. We came across a ravine. That seems like tomorrow Dana and Neil's problem. Nope, nope, it's today, Dana and Neil's problem. <laughs> <laughs> and while in there, we were thinking about how nice it'd be to find a creeper spawner or something and maybe start making TNT. Why is there just a thing of TNT over here? Excuse me? Yeah. Uh, just a block of TNT? Just a block of TNT. And listen, I am not even joking with the script or editing here or anything like that. The timing was actually just so perfect. Uh, all we had to do here was neutralize the spawner, which we did pretty easily. But while we did that, we could hear blaze of all things in the distance. Yeah. What? I hear, I hear blaze. Whatever this place was, it, it was huge and could be a game changer for this world. Yep. Ah. It's coming, it's coming, watch out. I found this chest that had some pretty sweet stuff in it, but then I noticed something. Ah! What? Dang it! What? <laughs> it was a trap. I now know why there was TNT all over the place. But did it blow up, blow up everything? Yeah, what were we thinking? Dude. What's up? There's a mess here now. Yeah. That's my bad. With a big chunk of the structure destroyed, along with our optimism, we decided to check out this area next to our base. I managed to find and kill a beacon a good distance away, but another one immediately grew in its place. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's another beacon. Got it. Okay, beacons are spawning fast. Assimilated creatures were pouring into this area alongside the multiple other mobs that were spawning in with the mob spawners. Having trouble climbing. A bunch of skeletons spotting and fighting, him, so I kind of love that. Good. There was an entire war going on down there, and the assimilateds were. The army of these monsters is. I don't know these skeletons. So taken out. Why? You seen any tactical advantages or? Anything? Oh. What? Spider came back as a skeleton spider thing. Look at it. It went back underground. What the saw heck? It. One thing though that we knew that none of these guys liked. Wait, Neil, I know what to do. What? Lava. <laughs> buckets of lava. Okay. So we grabbed as many buckets of lava as we could and poured them in. Wherever I can. It didn't end the fight, but it sure slowed it down. Oh snap! That one. I think I'm gonna go get more lava. Do it. We got another blood moon that night, which didn't seem to do anything since we were still underground, though all the mobs did turn and stare at Neil for a second, which made him feel very uncomfortable. Things have calmed down a good deal over here. Yeah, I think we took out a lot of the plants. We hadn't killed them all, but they couldn't spread either. Day 61, we go mining because we don't want to address the blaze creeper area. 
day 62, we accidentally end up in the Blaze Creeper area anyway, so we figure we'll try and get through this thing together. <laughs> wow. That's some good timing. As long as we're smart and careful, we should be able to get some good stuff out of here without recreating the disaster of last time. Boots, feather falling and protection. I'm gonna freaking put that on right now. It just occurred to me that I could just dig down another layer and it's a lot harder for them to hit me. Yes. Whoop. Not, not harder, not harder, not harder. I did manage to get a black shield from a zombie, which was pretty cool. Then we found another creeper spawner, which was awesome. As long as I don't do something stupid like... Heard that. On the other side of this stupid explosion, though, was a massive room full of spawners. And honestly, I've been having some pretty terrible luck with this place, so when we didn't get anywhere after a couple minutes, we left. Okay. Whoa! Speaking of scary places with terrible luck, I stopped by the war zone to see how that was going. While there were fewer beacons, those few had gotten a lot bigger. And it looked like the bigger they get, the bigger their spawns get. Luckily, while the beacons weren't getting killed by the lava, most of the monsters they were spawning in were. So that was nice. Keeping it at bay, at least. On day 65, Neil kept going on and on about wanting to fish. I uh, think he's starting to lose it. And we still have a really far way to go. I want to go fishing. Let's go fishing. <laughs> See this later. We popped upstairs to discover that the brick house was now contaminated. And we hurried back downstairs to see that our base was as well. After cleaning up as well as we could, I joined Neil on his obsession to go fishing. Neil, I'm so excited to fish. I'm not Are nervous you? about anything. We walked over to the new island where Neil hurriedly stepped out. Um, nope, there's things. There's things out here! Maybe we go back to our old house and go fishing over there. I decided to run back to the base and we decided to sleep our anxieties away. You cannot sleep now is all it says. But it looks like this ain't like real life. We have to deal with our mental illness head on. Neil dealed with his mental illness by building a small fishing hole next to our beds. All right, two thirds of the way through and I decided to take it upon myself to find us a new home. I wanted to dig so far away that we could essentially start over and get away from all this infested stuff and get ahead of it, knowing what we know now. Meanwhile, Neil's oh, fishing go, hole didn't seem to work. We think it's because he's underground. <laughs> Come on. I did find some diamond though, so we had that as a little win. I could really use some diamonds right now. That would be a good win. Uh, okay, we got diamond. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Neil was pretty fed up and decided to just risk it all and go topside, where he made a very unfortunate discovery. I'm fishing. Are you? Okay, am I fishing too early? What's going on here? Is it not working? I'm not, I'm not allowed to fish? Apparently, after a certain point here on Horror Island, there are just no more fish. Looking back now, I'm pretty sure this was the real turning point in Neil's character. No, no, not safe, not safe. Oh. I did find a cave, but I also found a new beacon, which was just a little too well guarded for me to get to. <laughs> oh, it's all back here. Oh, there's another big, a big, big rod. And they're spotting. They're spotting. I don't have a shield. Uh-oh. I don't have a shield! Luckily, bows and arrows are awesome, though it didn't seem worth it to fix this entire cave, so we just opted to block it off. I'm gonna go back to my happy place and go back to stripping. On day 68, two things became apparent. We would need to gather a lot more cobblestone, and we would definitely need to establish a new base. One that was above ground, where we could control every variable and start from scratch. Neil and I continued digging our super long tunnel to find a new home when we both realized just how much Neil was losing his mind. Oh, I'm out of torches. Ooh, Ooh I missed diamonds? What? <laughs> this was me, right? Yeah, this is my This is my yours, tunnel. yeah. This is my tunnel. How did I walk over diamonds? He did build a small underground green room though and plant some trees as we were running out of wood pretty quickly. We got back to digging to a new tomorrow when Neil found more TNT. It's that same kind of trap stuff. I'm behind you. Okay, well, we know what to do. Mine the TNT out. Oh, there's a creeper! Got him. Maybe the game was giving us another shot at a creeper spawner, and as long as we were careful, oh, we could- Watch out, here he goes. 
Well, dang it. From there, I saved Neil a couple times with my new favorite thing ah. to ever exist in Minecraft, my bow. Oh. And I found a spooky cave. Hey, spooky cave. I got it all lit up, but it's not spooky anymore. <laughs> ah, dude, there's more spooky cave. The next day, I got a pickaxe with fortune on it, and at the same time, we discovered that there are a ton of other stuff that we could be crafting, like weapons and tools and things like that. There's like a golden battle axe? What? Oh! Wait, you could be making other stuff? Golden boomerang. Oh! Hit me with it. What's gonna hurt you? Yeah. Did half a heart. Okay. So we went ahead and gave it a crack, though this boomerang kind of sucks. Um, but Neil made a cool shield, so I decided to make an iron enforced bow. How do I use this? But apparently it would only shoot something called bolts and not arrows, and we didn't really have what we needed to make bolts. So I just, uh, I'm just gonna stick to the vanilla stuff. We haven't really found that many diamonds. A <laughs> diamond! Wow. Two. <laughs> Gotta stop this. <laughs> no, 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 like it mined two. Oh, okay. I was like, when you're negative, like, you keep, good things keep happening. What's up <laughs> two again. That? Ooh, this is fun. And I took that as a sign that it was time to start digging up. <gasps> Surface. Gotta see what's out here. Oh my gosh. The surface seemed normal, untouched safe. Well, yeah, it's just a nice oak forest. I built a shelter as fast as I could, even saw a chimney in the distance. Maybe some new structures that we could explore. As night fell, we closed everything off, but before we could feel too safe, the all too familiar sound of explosions and assimilateds rang through the air. I wasn't going to rest easy unless we had some sort of watchtower, so early the next day I started working on that. Until I found something in the not so far away distance. <gasps> Neil. What? This is our original base. <laughs> we dug for days and we couldn't even get past our spawn point. I'm not sure exactly how this makes me feel, but we were in search of a clear area and, you know, we got one. So I guess I'm happy. As I finished up the tower, Neil brought up that there was a real chance that we'd run out of cobblestone soon, especially because we would be needing to line our whole ladder way and tunnels with cobblestone. All right, Dan, and I put a bucket of water down there. Let's see if I can uh, survive this fall. Good luck. Got my ladder just in case. Is that the water part? <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> I don't. I didn't remember where I uh, <laughs> where I put the. Leave it there. I got this. Hold Was on, that okay. the water part? <laughs> 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 it's okay. Probably fine that I die once. That's true, because you haven't died yet, huh? <laughs> so on day 75, an absolutely senile Neil made a cobblestone generator. Nope. And on day 76, I started stripping again and used all my cobblestone to make slabs to surround our base. And just as I started to feel a bit safer, there was something huge clipping okay. through our house. No, 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 no. Uh, there's something clipping through the house. What? Just a little bit. Yeah, I kind of want to see what it is, but I kind of don't want to see what it is. Did you break a ladder? No, there's, um, I kind of... Oh, that's what's clipping through the house. There is something? There's a big old thing right there. Whoa! Apparently there was a cave underneath this house the whole time. That's not good. That's bad. This was going to be our base for the rest of these 100 days, and we were not about to give it okay, up. Okay, I have a lot things. of cobblestone. So we put a band-aid over it as it got dark, and Neil and I started putting a plan together for the next day. Yeah, shoot, dude. That plan consisted of Neil standing on top of our tower while I go around the back of the creature. I'd lure it over to me, and Neil would shoot it from his safe spot. Once we got into position, we saw that it had actually made its way to the surface and was waiting for us. Uh-oh. He's breaking our house. He's breaking our house. It didn't give us a chance to strike first. Oh, it's breaking our tower. We unleashed everything that we had, all of our defenses, and hoped that it would be enough. Dude, you broke our house. Nice. Okay. Dang, that was our only house. Well, that's not true, but. We then explored the hole that it had come from and found a ravine full of beacons and baddies. The best thing we could think of was to bury it in thick layers of cobblestone. 
At least this way, if something did start making their way towards us, we'd have time to react. As the sun set on this eventful day, another blood moon rose. Uh-oh, blood moon is rising? This time we were upstairs. Well, I'm still in the house. <laughs> downstairs. We should Neil. be downstairs. We should not be up here. <laughs> Neil and I barricaded ourselves in the tower in hopes that we'd be safe. And you know what? Not only were we safe that night, but it was kind of nice. For the first time in a while, we were able to take a minute and relax. And it was during this time that we realized our true goal for the remaining 23 days. We needed to secure our base and create a sustainable home, one where we could live without fear or worry. First, we'd need to secure the ground and we'd need a lot of lava to do that. <laughs> yep, it's a guy. It's a guy. Another block breaking guy showed up, but actually got stuck in a tree and died right there. Trees were also going to be essential for this base. Got him. These trees might actually be kind of useful. What trees? Just these trees, these trees outside of our house that are now burning down because of the lava. Okay, just kidding. On day 79, Neil crafted a great sword and it was pretty great. Ooh. I continued surrounding our base in cobblestone planks or uh, slabs or whatever. I went mining for some more material and Neil decided to drink a glowing potion to see what it would do. I'm glowing. Whoa, I can see you through the wall. Am I glowing? We managed to enchant a sword with flame and a diamond pick with efficiency and unbreaking three. The perfect pickaxe to gather obsidian for our roof. Well, I'm glad this thing has efficiency on it. Meanwhile, Neil went back into the nether in order to get more blaze rods. While down there, Neil hears the results of what must have been a very funny joke. <laughs> Why is there an evil laugh down here? That was weird. And I started putting the new roof on the tower and continued working on the moat. I'm so glad we found a nature-friendly solution to our problems. All right, it's starting to get darky. Speaking of being friendly with nature, Neil was making new friends of his own. Oh my gosh, what is going on over here? And I found more diamonds. Diamond! Not that I even needed them though, as the skeleton decided to lend me his when I asked him nicely with my sword. What? What? Freaking diamond pants. What? Neil took me on a nice tour of his path that he finished, which would lead us from the nether portal straight to a blaze spawner without any risk of getting attacked. Whoa, Whoa. Ow. Where'd he come from? Yeah, I'm going to you, Neil. Okay. Son of a God. Well, maybe this isn't a safe place. Ah. If you come in here, they can't get you. Um, <laughs> I mean, that guy can. Day 83, to put the finishing touch on my favorite weapon, I got flame for my bow. You can catch on fire? Oh, you do. I was unstoppable. And thank goodness I was too, because the hill next to our base was getting infected, and we'd need to remove it in order to fully secure this place. <laughs> <laughs> We never managed to get our creeper farm going, but we had nabbed a couple blocks of TNT, which we decided to use here. Whoa, that did not do a lot. And it was with a strange musical note that everything really started to I change. I didn't see that one as well. There oh. we go. Wasn't done. Aw, oh, man. You missed it? What? Why'd the music just do What's a thing? What's the music doing? Node. What is node? What is node? Um, just like that, all of the leaves changed from their usual green to red, and the infested green blocks also turned red. Oh, this is oh, this is infecting a lot. What is this? The nether wasn't too much better, as navigating through the red particle fog stuff was becoming impossible. With the help of some fire resistance potion, we were able to borrow some blaze rods. But to be honest, gathering the blaze rods wasn't too hard with them glowing and everything, but we had no real way of telling if there were wither skeletons about with just how dense this fog was. Yeah, man, I like cannot see. This might be our last trip to the nether. When we got back, we learned that wood planks are actually not infected by the infestation. Also, for some reason, now all the trees outside were red and so was the sky. Probably not a big deal, but I figured I'd mention it. Sky is full on red. 
There's also a ton of new trees or something growing. It's like a whole new biome has formed around us. Whoa, that's a new creature. There are even new creatures appearing everywhere, including this fella. Though, it's nothing my bow can't handle. That's a scary creature. That's a new and a scary oh, creature. Oh, is it? And it's dead. Thank you, fire. That night while working on the moat, though, I got snuck up on by what I can only imagine was that guy's brother. Whoop! 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 Luckily, I have a superpower where I can respawn, and once we sent him to HE Double Hockey Sticks, Neil and I spent the rest of the night in the watchtower in case any more brothers came after us. Or, or sisters, you know. While up there, we actually spotted a new building close by that seemed to have a spawner in it. There's, there's a spawner next to us. The next morning, we leave the tower, some of us more gracefully than others. Gosh dang it. And we notice that all the trees are now just gone. However, the logs that were floating in the air seemed to still be okay, so it looked like it had to be touching an infested block in order to get turned. We have a lot of saplings though, so I mean, if we are able to plant. I go to get more lava, Neil checks on the XP farm base, which was not looking that good. We were also running super low on cobblestone at this point, so Neil whipped up another cobblestone generator. And on day 86, I planted a tree completely surrounded by cobblestone. There. Neil made some improvements to his cobblestone generator, and I attempted to make a wall of obsidian to prevent mobs from breaking our house anymore. Nice. The next day, the tree had grown. It had red leaves, but it was still a tree. This means that if we can build a tree farm, we'll have a renewable resource that the infestation cannot touch. Before I get to that though, I had to finish the moat. Neil got this super sweet shot from the roof. You're welcome. <laughs> and I finished before it got too dark. It's not perfect, but it'll definitely work. Neil saw some chickens in the distance, so he built a bridge made of wood to cross the lava moat. He got the chickens, but was confused why the bridge was gone. You know, the wooden bridge. That is, until he built a second wooden bridge over the lava moat. Well, you okay? That's right. You can't use wooden slabs because lava. He did end up getting them in though, and was later attacked by a red enderman. Oh, oh. You What's killing me? Yes, someone's, oh! Whoa! I don't know what oh. that is. I don't know what that is. We went upstairs to try and lure it over. Hey, loser. But as we were doing that, one of Neil's chickens turned out oh. to be a well, How did you, what? You good? That chicken must have been an imposter. Nope, oh. nope, there's another dude in here. Oh. After taking care of that, Neil took out his frustration on the Enderman. I hit him once. Trying to, trying to car, What's the word? Compartmentalize my uh, my feelings. The next day, Neil went to check on the spawner near us while I was working on making a functional and pretty tree farm. How does this area look? Does it look cheery? It does. Looks like a home, but with red leaves. The spawner was a zombie villager spawner. We both immediately had the same idea. If we could catch two of them and cure them, then we could get villagers. We could restart civilization. We'd have to be careful and keep them away from the infestation, but okay. we just might be able to do this. I immediately started building an underground area for Make our villagers over here. and connected it to where the spawner would drop in. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna go light it up real quick. Okay. Get, get you. <laughs> yeah, get out of here, <laughs> Meanwhile, Neil made three splash potions of weakness and gathered all of our golden apples. While working on getting the spawner ready, we have to sneeze. <laughs> While working on getting the spawner ready, we discovered that if a zombie villager stands on infested dirt for too long, they'll actually get assimilated, so it was something we'd need to keep in mind. The next day, I built a roof over the spawner, and Neil found this oh. really big creature that was digging very close to me. Neil! Yep. Don't do this to me. So the next day, we went out and hunted it down. Yeah. I replaced the ground in the spawner room to keep things from getting infested, and Neil played with that boomerang. Don't mind me, I'm just playing with my boomerang. Then I started a wheat farm, and Neil played with that boomerang. Are you trying to hit me? <laughs> no. <laughs> just on the return. And really quick, if you guys are still here and you guys are watching, chances are you probably like what you're watching. And if you are not subscribed yet, I would very humbly ask you to do so. I've also recently spent 100 days farming pumpkins, which is like this, but a lot nicer. We do stream these, by the way, publicly, so be sure to hit the bell icon as well so that you're notified when we stream. 
And if you really want to help support the channel and get access to a bunch of exclusive content, patreon.com slash gamers in the attic is the best place to help us. Patrons are actually given the opportunity to be a part of Mining in the Attic, which we are starting season two very soon. So if you want to participate in that, check out patreon.com slash gamers in the attic. There's also a three hour cut of this video available to certain patrons, which is a really good time if you want to get more of mine and Neil's genuine reaction to all this. It's really fun. It's a good time. Anyway, on with the video. Neil had built a clock out of infested flesh or something that would tell us what phase we were in. And on day 93, it said eight, which is the stage after node. I don't know when it told us that it was eight and we're not exactly sure what that means, but the sky was now foggy instead of red and that was pretty much all we got. Here, I don't want this. This is gross. Here, it's, take it. It's yuck. sanitary. I don't care, yuck. I'm gonna go save some villagers okay. themselves. Okay. I will be right back. I was gonna go with you, but that's that's fine. That is, that is not gonna invite. You can come. No, I don't, I just, I don't want to. Also, what, um, what is eight? Doing? I don't know. <laughs> Our first villagers fell into the trap and we started the healing process. Unfortunately, one of them was apparently assimilated already and quickly infected the other. They both did. We tried covering up every infested block between the spawner and the curing room and tried again, but not before Neil pulled this high IQ play. Oh. What? Oh, I don't want to talk about it. What happened? Nothing. You know, it's a good thing Neil's here with me since, you know, I'm so new to this game. I'm, I'm not sure why he seemingly wasted a perfectly good potion when we still needed to, but I'm certain he has his reasons. I really am lucky to have him here. We then journeyed out to find more sand so we could make more bottles. As we got to shore, we heard a familiar bell sound. Oh! Oh, that's okay. what the bell is! It's a new one of those? It's a new one of those! We'd been hearing that sound so much over the last hundred days, and now we finally knew what it meant. Wish me luck. Okay, Keep here I'll safe. dig up high so I can see. Oh! Where, where even it? are you? Shut up! Neil boated out to the other shore and got all the sand that we'd need for bottles. Hey, it's, uh, it's nice over here. <laughs> I hear seagulls again. We should now be all ready to get these villagers cured and restart civilization. Freaking hate list. Okay. <laughs> New potions were brewed and we trapped another villager. But this one gave us Call of the Hive. I got Call of the Hive. You do? So yeah. Do Which we haven't really talked about much today, but somebody who is assimilated will give mobs near them this Call of the Hive effect. So basically what this meant was that this guy was already assimilated. And he indeed was. All right, let's go in there, clean up and try again. Do you have any uh, sanitation stuff like bleach or? Uh, yeah, ready. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. There we wow. go. The shoot just scrub it with your face. <laughs> that's yeah, that looks <laughs> incredible. After cleaning out the curing room, we tried again. Oh, oh. And again. Dang it. And again. And again, with the exact same results every time. Do you want to do your uh. purifying dance again? Do you use okay. your tongue? Though we hated to admit it, it appeared that in this stage of Horror Island, zombie villagers simply can't be cured. So if we couldn't restore the world, then what was the point? Why should we even bother? We shouldn't like find a point though. Like why, why do we do this? Well, why do we do anything to be happy? I think let's just be happy. So we started decorating our base. I built a nice bridge. We started putting lanterns everywhere. We cut down some trees, harvested the crop. We had finally made peace with Horror Island. But Horror Island had not made peace with us. There's a lot of, why is there a lot of flying stuff out there today? There's holy, what? Holy crap, there's a lot of stuff outside. There's, <laughs> oh. We retreated to the tower where we would attack anything that was near. Luckily, while up in the tower, we were safe. I'm at the top of the tower. He is Oh my gosh! Oh, he's breaking the tower! What? Yeah, it is breaking the tower! Him. Oh gosh. <laughs> There's a big guy. There's a big guy! Yeah, he's the one that he breaks blocks. Neil, I'm so scared. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, no. Ah! 
<laughs> we got him! We got him! We got him! Okay, okay. Rebuild, 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 rebuild. Oh man. Okay. Yeah, that was your rebuild, your rebuild phase. It didn't seem like these guys could break obsidian though, so we came to the conclusion that we'd need to get as much obsidian as possible. We had a lot of buckets, so we'd get all the lava we could to try and speed up the process. I just needed to get down the tower. I'm gonna get it. Okay. Why is there carpet on the ground? And how did lava get in here? Oh, your cobblestone generator. Oh, <laughs> don't pin this on me. And it looks like these creatures have somehow managed to get across our moat, our first line of defense. What's happening? He got, a, he got into our area and he spawns wolves and stuff. <gasps> oh dear, oh dear, it's breaking. It's breaking stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's the guy. I'm coming, I'm coming. He's gonna spawn a wolf, watch I'm coming, out. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. We gotta kill him, we gotta kill him. Where are you? Okay, okay, uh, um, they still don't like lava, uh, they Kay. can't break obsidian. You know what else they can't break? What? Uh, uh, uh... What? what? I thought you had something! Yeah, it, 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 the, <laughs> Ore! Yeah, you're right! They can't or, break or. ore! Do we have ore? Neil scared me while going up the ladder. <laughs> Hi. And while making plans to gather ores and obsidian, the baddies saw an opportunity to take us out once and for all, and they took it. There! Okay. Wait, did other stuff come out of that? Sounded like oh, stuff. Oh, get out of <laughs> Where'd my pickaxe go? I had a pick. Dude, look at our tower! It's gone! What? Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. <laughs> it was do or die time. And while I was doing, Neil was dying. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> There's so many outside. Why is there so many outside? What are we supposed to do? The, I, th I think we gotta uh, th we gotta surround ourselves in blocks that can't break. Dang it! Dang it! Ah! Dang it! I'm just gonna go down, find some lava, get as much obsidian as I can. Oh my word! We went underground and started gathering ores and obsidian. This continued into day 95 with Neil gathering obsidian while I carefully added that obsidian to our base. So far, it seems that the baddies can't break in, though. They sure can still drop acid on us. We managed to pick a lot of them off with our bows, but our constant panicking really made that difficult. It was time to conduct an official test of the watchtower. I'm getting a little bit more safe feeling now that you got this obsidian going. <laughs> so I put my life on the line and allowed a flying dude to get all the way up to me. Okay, it, it, it doesn't seem to be able to get me in here, but it's sure trying to. Uh... We need to make this bigger. <laughs> Got him. Okay, this might work. I gather even more obsidian as well as a bunch of lava, which was slow work, but at least down there, we don't have baddies trying to kill us all the time. At one point, we killed one and it spawned a beacon in its place, which wouldn't have been all that noteworthy or too bad, except the beacon spawned on cobblestone, which was something we figured was impossible. Oh, get I finished yeah. the day by making an obsidian wall with water and lava buckets, but realized that the water was actually destroying our lava moat, which explains how creatures have been able to walk through. Oh no. Is that a bad thing? I just ruined our moat. Then, on day 97, we started the biggest fight of our lives. I spotted a creature off in the distance and Neil rushed over to see it. Oh! That's it. That's it. The thing that's the size of our house. Oh my what gosh. Is oh my gosh. You see the amount of tentacles that thing has? Sensing our distress, another creature made a mad dash towards us, destroying my beautiful bridge. Dude, I worked so hard on that. I know, we made it pretty and then- Dude, I hate that guy. One of the last things I had built, and honestly, the last thing on here, including Neil, that I cared about, this just became personal. That was terrifying noise. Thank you. That was me. That was you? Okay. <laughs> that was, I was literally like my cat for a second. It was literally me. <laughs> this is for that bridge. You jerk. After taking the baddie out, we couldn't find the flying creature, but it was able to find us, and he brought a friend. <laughs> oh, oh! Oh, there's two! Oh, there's two! Oh my gosh! Ah! What is what is that? Ancient overlord? Yep, boomerang, boomerang, do sure. it. Sure. Neil was able to get some hits on the ground-based creature, something called an ancient overlord, but it took us a while longer to hit the flying creature, an ancient dreadnought. Where, oh, there he is, there he is. Yeah. Got him. 
He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. We decided to focus our attention on the Dreadnought since the Overlord had walked away and didn't seem to be able to hurt us so long as we were inside of our base. Whereas the Dreadnought was able to spit acid at us, that would give us a wither Ooh. effect. Here comes the acid, watch out for wither. <laughs> oh, he like knocked me off. We were hitting it with arrows and even managed to hit it with lava, which seemed to bring its health down a bit until it just stopped taking any damage at all. Even our arrows stopped hurting it. He's like right at me. <laughs> this could only mean one thing, that it had some sort of ability to adapt to our attacks. And just then, the overlord came back, spawned in another dude, and this guy ran over to the front door and destroyed everything that wasn't obsidian. Whoa, it broke a lot of stuff. It did not break. It broke ore. It broke ore. It can break ore. This creature was not immune to lava, luckily, and just as we took him out, the dreadnought flew away. Okay, where's the big guy? Uh, right over here. However, the overlord stayed. Maybe he was stuck. Maybe he was stubborn. But we managed to put a bunch of lava buckets around him, hoping that it was less able to adapt than the dreadnought. It took a very, very long time, but its health slowly got lower and lower and lower. Come on. Don't figure out that if you move, you'll be fine. <laughs> the Overlord would be dead very soon. I never thought I'd feel bad for one of these creatures, but seeing this giant and unique being slowly get burnt to death was definitely a very harrowing experience. It didn't seem malicious like the Dreadnought or savage like the flying dudes or crazy like Neil. Maybe all it wanted was freedom. So freedom we gave it in the only way we were able. We knew that we had to finish this thing once and for all and that we'd only have one more shot at it. We started to prepare for the return of the Dreadnought, which could happen any day. I built and enchanted a halberd while Neil started putting together potions. We'd need any and all options to inflict damage on this thing if we stood a chance. While he worked on that, I gathered more obsidian. A lot more. Thankfully, my unbreaking and efficiency diamond pick got us just enough for me to expand our tower. Neil had the idea to make invisibility potions, which if it works meant that we would be able to move around freely without any fear of creatures attacking us. Hey, go walk in the lava, you big slug. Give you a potion, bottles up. No, you can't. Is this working? Nope. Oh, big flying guy, nope. When that didn't work, our next idea was to place lava falls on each corner of the tower and massive columns of lava all around the base. Basically, if this dreadnought or anything else were to come near us, it was gonna get burned. Ow. After finishing the potions, Neil made a wall out of bone blocks because the number of skeletons we've killed at this point is ridiculous, and I fixed the moats. I gathered every last bit of obsidian we had and used it on our base. We weren't sure if this was going to be enough, but we would soon find out. Day 99. The day started with Neil remembering that shields exist in this game, and uh, he actually learned that we could make obsidian shields. How many obsidian? Here, I, I have four. a bunch. Here. One, two, three, four. Woo! Try this out. Yeah. Okay. I showed him the latest tower design and we waited for the return of the dreadnought. Hey. Oh, hello. So now there's little lookouts where you can look out. Oh, I even put little barriers uh, in case hey. something knocks us off and then you can get up top. Yeah. So things can shoot us from above, but we can shoot them from below, you know? Now we're wasting arrows. Hey, you're right. Sorry. Anyway, cool. I like this a lot. While waiting, we got attacked by this acid spitter thing. And then we heard it. There he is. The lava is definitely slowing him down and chipping away at his health. 
but it's slowly beginning to lose its effect again. That's good. We just gotta keep this up. We fire arrows at it until it starts blocking them and even deflecting them back at us. Shoot, my deflected my bullet. Oh yeah, our arrows seem to not be doing much with Does it at least anymore. get his attention? Is he coming closer? Look, He's ow. Like it was time to bring out Neil's potions. All right, so I made some splash potions of damage. I need Kay. to lead him down here. Okay. Distract him, and then I can go above and splash a potion at him. Okay, distract. I can do that. But just then, the worst thing we could have imagined happened. Crap, he's healing all the way, dude. Shoot. Not only was the lava and our arrows having no effect on him, but now his health was actually going up. This was starting to look impossible. But just as we were starting to lose hope, Neil, in a moment of lucidity, threw a potion of harming at it. Oh, I threw a harm potion at him. It's doing damage. Holy m cow. Yeah, it is. Okay, where'd he go? Come <laughs> on, buddy. And all at once, the lava was harming it again. Oh yeah, oh yeah, come on. I lured the dreadnought downstairs while Neil would hit it again and again with potions. You know what, I just thought of what? something. Now I knew Neil had gone crazy like 50 days ago, but to be honest, this was actually working, but it seemed to realize what was happening and started to fly away from us. We needed a little bit of crazy if we were gonna beat this thing. So Neil ran downstairs and he grabbed his fishing rod. He's coming full he's, circle. He's in prime spot here. Just like that, Neil made the perfect cast and got the dreadnought right where we could reach Ooh. him. It was time to finish this. That fishing rod totally works. Here. Whoa. He's right here. Oh! Ooh. My sword isn't doing any damage to him. Oh, little dude, little dude, watch out, watch out! Behind him! Oh. Okay, got that. I took a potion of strength and tried my bow once again. This was it. If I could just keep my cool, then we had it in the bag. Come on, quit panicking! It took both of our combined strength to overcome the mental obstacles that this dreadnought was bombarding us with. But once we did... Oh! Oh! There he goes! Dead! We killed your master! Woo! Oh! You're all losers! <laughs> Woo! We did it, oh. dude! Potions of harming! We shared a couple potions of regeneration to celebrate as we had finally defeated the biggest and baddest creatures that Horror Island had to offer. Guys. So, just in time too, day 99. Okay. Um, but uh, I don't know about this house anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's the safest place either. I, well, it's to be honest, I mean, it, it's safe, but it's not, I don't know. It's not home anymore. You yeah. Know? Well, what what would be home to Ooh. you <laughs> if you could choose? I mean, to be honest, we already have a home. Yeah, that's overrun with guys. We just killed an overlord and a dreadnought. That's <laughs> honestly. I think we're ready. To I think you're take back right. our home. I think you're probably right. It was time to go home. We decided that we'd re-enter the jungle home from the tunnels. We don't want to die over and over again just trying to get in. It looks like while the infestation was pretty bad over here, the biome hadn't changed to be all red yet, so that was interesting. As soon as we got in and cleared all the baddies, we were confronted by the largest beacon we'd seen okay. yet. Holy cow! Do you still have fire effect? Yeah. There you go, I'm oh. shooting it. Nice. Luckily for us, it was so big that it was clipping outside of the house, meaning that whatever it spawned in would be outside. It took an obscene amount of time, but we finally managed to kill it. Boy, that took a while. Dude, is he getting hurt? Looks like it. It did spawn a large creature and tried regrowing even, but we were able to cut it down and the creature seemed to have spawned in an area too small and it died soon after. With the beacon dead, we noticed something though that we weren't expecting. The ground started to change. It started changing back. That means that this world, it wasn't a total loss. There was still hope after all. We had given up on this place a long time ago, but now, now we're both ready. Ready for another 100 days. 
where we wouldn't just live in this world, but we would fix this world. Another 100 days where we would- Um... Dana? What? <laughs> Do you know what, what that is? Whoa, 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 whoa. That wasn't Get there a way. second ago. What is that? What is that? It's like a no, I wanna... It's like a fork or something. What is going on? What I what? don't know. Does land There we go. What the diamond? <laughs> this is an island of pumpkins over here. That's weird. Why is there and what are these? Are you ready? For what? I <laughs> wait, wait, what? What do you mean are you ready? What? This purple carpet does not match anything else. <laughs> it's uh, purple. Yes? Are we? I I mean we kinda have to be. I guess whoever put this here might think we are, so. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it. Okay, do whatever one. Nothing happened.